I know you heard of Git, and but have y'all used Git or GitHub somewhere or another? Even just like gone to the website or something like that. I went to the website, made the account, and download the desktop app that the, the syllabus said to do. Sweet. Okay. And that's, for, that's all I got. For this class? Yeah. Or, oh, awesome. Sweet. Awesome. Okay, perfect. So uh, just to give you a quick intro, so Git is a version control system which helps uh, users keep entire code and history on a repository and um, uh, basically you can think of it like a, uh, a directory on your computer that has that is version so in other words uh, have y'all ever used Dropbox well I know you said some other app or, but Dropbox uh, so what they do is like every time you upload a file and you replace it, they'll keep a version of it. So that way, if you screw up or you deleted it, there's there's a version of that file that you originally uploaded. So they have so they're they're version controlled there. Uh, so Git is essentially that it's a version control system. Um, so the reasons why you care to use it is because it records uh, changes to a file or a set of files over time, so that you can recall specific versions later. Uh, generally means if you if you screw things up or lose files, you can easily recover them. Um, in addition, you get all of this for very little overhead, so it's like very easy to uh, to maintain and, and keep track of. It's, it's uh, especially sites like GitHub. GitHub is just uh, a service, but Git itself is is the 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 the, co the core system of it. Uh, so there's there's other services besides GitHub that offer it. Um, here's a little screenshot of what uh, snapshots are, but uh, you can uh, say like Git thinks of its data more like a series of snapshots of a mini file system. Uh, with Git, every time you commit or save state of your project, Git basically takes a picture of what all of your files look like at the moment and stores a reference to that snapshot. Uh, to be efficient, if files have not changed, Git does not store those files again. It just links to the previous identical file it has already stored. So if you if you look at version one, um, that's like I guess you could say like this is the original snapshot it recorded, and then version two when a commit's made and pushed out, um, you can notice like the that B file hasn't changed, so it doesn't recreate it. It's, it has still has the original one of it, and so far as uh, you know so forth. Um, so you, if you think of like a directory on your computer. You can have a thousand files or one file. You can commit same thing. You can commit a thousand files or you can commit one file. That's and every time you do that, it's every time it's a snapshot it takes. Y'all can stop me if I'm going too fast. Uh, so users can make any changes and also pull updates from other user changes. So that's what's great about Git is because you there's team collaboration. Uh, so I personally recommend using it just for yourself if you're a solo person, but also it's great uh, when you're going into a team atmosphere. Uh, these are the things that you'll be dealing with day to day. Uh, another advantage is uh, Git is offline, so you don't even have to be connected to the internet to make a commit. Uh, you can do it without any internet connection. Uh, so Git is a way, uh, basically, uh, like I said, it's like a, a, a core software that is installed on, on a computer. But just like what you did is, I'm going to give you all the easy way, which is uh, an application. So it's got a UI a interface where you can easily do what I'm about to mention. So uh, if you're interested to like installing it manually and doing command line, you can totally do so. Um, but that's not necessary. So of course, it, it uses command line. Uh, has anybody used terminal? You probably have, right? Yeah. Um, anybody else? No. Okay. So command. Uh, so command line is basically this little black uh, terminal window that uh, both Windows and Mac have, and you can basically run a series of commands. And it's like um, when you write, basically like when you create a, a directory on your computer or on your desktop, you usually right click and hit new folder or something like that. You can do that with command line by typing like. Uh, I don't know, I can't think of the command line, but it's like um, new directory or something like that, and then you, you put a name, and then it just creates it for you. So these are just basically commands that the computer runs, but you, you usually have a user interface that does it for you. 
I'm gonna skip this stuff. Okay, so Git repositories um, is basically you, you create a local directory that's currently not under version control and turn it into a Git repository. Uh, so I'll explain that a little bit, but basically you can think of a repository like a like a, a directory of, or a bucket or something like that. To to create a, a repository, you would just run this is again command line. It's running git init on that directory, and it would it would initiate it. Um, when you run git, and again this is all command line. Uh, you're gonna if you run git clone and then a URL for a repository. Uh, it basically grabs the entire um, repository uh, to your local computer. So it just so uh, just to kind of give you a retrospect, remember how I was saying every commit you do get stores a snapshot of it. When you clone a repository to your computer, you're basically downloading all of that information. You're downloading all of those snapshots locally, which is pretty cool. Uh, you can run uh, commands like uh, status, which basically tells you which files are untracked, and if they're tracked, if they're unmodified, modified, or staged. And um, I'll explain those in a little bit. You can also have a file that ignores files. So um, I don't think y'all have gone into WordPress or anything. But you, you've probably seen, like, on a, what was it? Your, that one JavaScript, uh, Angular, you're running, you're learning Angular at one point. Uh, so there's a you've seen like when you it creates like these crazy files in there um, like tons of files when you're when you're using it. Yeah. Uh, Git ignore basically does that. It ignores just these random files that are auto generated by the computer. Or have y'all seen on a Mac or on a computer? It, it's like a dot underscore and some weird character, some like you know weird naming or something like that. Those files you don't care for. They're just system compu They're just computer files. Git ignore will ignore those files. Uh, when you run git commit, and I'm explaining the command line, you're not going to run these commands. Um, you'll go through a through a tutorial just to do it, but it's just so that way you can understand what the application is doing. Uh, you're going to not be running these commands uh, from this point on after the tutorial, but it's just so you can understand what the application is doing. Uh, so if you, when you run git com uh, commit, uh, after you add files to be staged, you can commit your changes. Remember that commit records the snapshot you set up in your staging area. You can do multiple commits. So every time you perform a commit, you're recording a snapshot of your project that you can revert or compare it to later. So the same, going back to that original picture I showed, you can do as many commits as you want. I mean, literally as many commits as you want. Um, and then there's remote repositories. So uh, to be able to collaborate on any Git project, you need to know, you need to know how to manage your remote repositories, which are versions of your project that are hosted on the internet or network else or somewhere. This is where those services come in. So there's GitHub, there's Bitbucket, there's Beanstalk. There's a lot of companies that, um, that do this type of service. Now they're becoming uh, very inexpensive. So for example, GitHub, you can, you can create a repository for free if it's public. If you create an account with, the, with your school email, They'll give you, I believe, like a full year for free, which is awesome. Um, Bitbucket is the one that allows you to create accounts for free, even if they're private. So you can create private repositories with Bitbucket, which is really nice, too. A lot of companies that don't want to pay that extra buck, they'll use Bitbucket. Um, even companies that have the money for it. It's just interesting. Um, I'm going uh, to yeah, replace that. Um, then git fetch is basically um, at any time, basically, so you can do it to git fetch at any time to update. So this operation never changes any of your local branches and is safe to do so without changing your working copy. So if you're in a team collaboration and you run git fetch, um, or let's just say I commit something and then Justin commits something the day later, and then the following day I want to see his changes, I would do git fetch. That way I can see uh, what Justin committed after mine. Um, but git fetch is safe because it won't override my uh, files yet. It's just kind of like letting me know, hey, Justin created a new file update. Once I say git merge, that's when the action happens, where I actually not only uh, uh, get those changes, but also merge them. So if he overrid like my CSS file or my HTML file, it'll override that. 
uh, git pull runs git fetch with the given parameters and calls git merge uh, to merge the retrieve branch heads into the current branch. So basically what that's saying is um, these two commands, so fetch and merge, are done at the same time. That's, that's all git pull is. So typically you're going to pull because that's two commands in one. You know? So that's what pull is. And then push is how you uh, transfer your commits to the, uh, to the remote repository. So remember how you can do it locally without internet connection? You make a commit, it's done locally, it's, it has not been pushed to the remote repository. So when you run kit push, that's when it's actually pushed. Does that, does that make sense? Or is this all crazy? Okay. Uh, I'm not going to go over branches, but they're great. Tagging also is awesome. All right, so like GitHub is the one I'm going to uh, want you guys to use. Uh, we're going to be using it uh, for, for, this, for the project itself. Um, so just to, again, just letting you all know it's the largest web-based hosting service for Git repositories. Uh, it's popular, so it uses uh, it, it stores a lot of open source projects. So like ones like Bootstrap, um, which is a really I'm gonna go over Bootstrap. It's a it's a great um, HTML CSS framework. Um, and then just like you already did, is uh, you're gonna download the GitHub Desktop app, and everything that I just mentioned, this does it by just clicking buttons. So it's really awesome.